Good morning and welcome to Mass Memorial CME Sunday School for August 14th, 2022, and this is Sister Sharon. At this time, I would like to dedicate this Sunday School lesson in loving memory of one of our former First Ladies, Sister Mary Littlejohn. Sister Littlejohn loved Sunday School and when she was able would always be in attendance. And so she will be missed, but we praise God that she is now with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And our prayers are going out to Reverend Little John and to the entire family. Let's get started with our lesson. We're on our summer quarter, Partners in a New Creation, Unit 3, The Great Hope of the Saints. Our lesson, A New City. Our key verse comes from Revelation, the 21st chapter, the 14th verse that says, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Our lesson scripture comes from Revelation, the 21st chapter, verses 9 through 21. But I'm going to go ahead and give you the very last verses also in the chapter, just to finish up chapter 21. And next week we'll be in chapter 22. Um, thanking Sister Young for doing the first part last week of this lesson from Revelations 21 verses 1 through 8. So we want to thank our superintendent for doing last week's lesson. Now let's do some background. So we're in the book of the Revelation and the writer is John the Apostle and he wrote the Revelation after being exiled for faithfully preaching the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And we can see this reference in Revelation the first chapter the ninth verse. He was located at this time where he was exiled was the Asian island of Patmos off the coast of Asia Minor. And Patmos was a small island used by Rome to banish criminals. The type of writing is called apocalyptic and the Greek word apocalypse means a revelation, unveiling or disclosure. It seeks to reveal mysteries about heaven and earth, humans and God, angels and demons, life in the world today and the world to come. Apocalyptic literature uses different literary devices. It uses visions, ethical conclusions, powerful symbolism, a stark contrast between good and evil, and a concern with end times. So the book of Revelations is apocalyptic. Doing more background, this was written during the reign of the Roman Emperor Domitian um, from AD 81 to 96. And this particular emperor, emperor demanded that the entire empire called him Lord and God. So they, he was into emperor worship, him being the emperor and, make, and telling everyone else to call him Lord and God. And we know that is not what we do. You'll see in this le lesson, the number 12, okay? And you'll see 12 over and over and over again. And so with that in mind, 12 is a, com is a number of completion or perfection of government or rule or authority, okay? So all through this lesson, you'll see 12, and I actually have highlighted it by putting it in red throughout the lesson. Here's the outline of the book of Revelation. It first goes into the introduction and John's vision of Jesus. Then it's the letters to the seven churches, the throne room of heaven, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the woman, the dragon, the beast, and the lamb, the seven bowls, and that's of God's wrath, the fall of Babylon, the millennium and the final judgment. Today's lesson comes from the new creation and the new Jerusalem. And then the last part of Revelations is the source of life and conclusion. In this lesson also, you'll see the term the lamb or you'll see lamb of God. And we can see this in other scriptures. So it says in John, the first chapter, the 29th verse, the next day, John, and this is talking about John the Baptist, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So we see the Lamb is Jesus Christ. In Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the seventh verse, it says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Again, referring to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then in Revelations 5, 1 through 9, it says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? 
and no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept, and this is John, the apostle talking, he says, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And so here we see that saying the lion of the tribe of Judah is able to open the book. And then when we go into the next book, next verse, we, we see this, we see the lion of the tribe of Judah. And it says, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. So the lion of the tribe of Judah is a lamb. And remember, Jesus Christ is the lamb of God. So again, it says, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty four, excuse me, and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and hast redeemed us to God by, the blo by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So when we talk about the lamb today, we're talking about the lamb of God. We're talking about the lion of the tribe of Judah. We're talking about the root of David. We're talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's get into our lesson. Our lesson is Revelation, the 21st chapter, verses 9 through 21. The first part, the New Jerusalem. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And so here, this whole lesson is about New Jerusalem. It's about the vision of New Jerusalem. And so it starts off with one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls. And the seven bowls, and this is from a previous lesson all the way back in 2021, but it comes from the seven bowls of wrath, okay? And so one of the angels who had one of the bowls of wrath is now saying to John, um, would you like to see the bride? And he said, the lamb's wife. And you have to remember that even the church is considered, the, um, we as the church are considered the lamb's wife. We're considered his wife. But here we're talking about the actual city. And then it says, he carried me away in the spirit so that they ended up on this high and great mountain. And then he saw the holy city and the city is actually descending out of the heavens. Okay, so, it's, so this is really the end of things. Okay, now there's a new heaven, there's a new earth. And now the, there's a new Jerusalem, okay? Because it's not the new Jerusalem from what we have now. This is a new Jerusalem and it's coming down, it's descending out of heaven from God and it's filled with the glory of God. And because it's filled with the glory of God, it's just bright. It's so bright and it's just so light. And so the only way John could compare it is to compare it to um, precious jewels, okay? And here he says a jasper stone. And he says, it's so clear, it's as clear as crystal. Okay, that's how bright this light is that is um, emanating from the Holy Jerusalem because of the glory of God. Now here we call the city, the New Jerusalem, but the city of God is called different things throughout the scriptures. So the city of God has been called New Jerusalem. We see that in Revelation, the third chapter, the 12th verse and Revelation the 21st chapter in the second verse. It's been called the Holy City. Um, and there's a song, I'm going to view that holy city. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, one of these days. And that's, a, that's our prayer. Um, the holy city in Revelations 21.2 and Revelations 22.19 is called heavenly Jerusalem in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the 22nd verse. And that same verse is called Mount Zion. Okay. And remember, we, we talked about Mount Zion before. Sometimes they're talking about the hill. Okay. But here, in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the 22nd verse is actually talking about 
the New Jerusalem, okay, um, the heavenly city. It's also called um, the Bride of the Lamb, and that's what we're talking about today in Revelation, the 21st chapter, the ninth verse. So again, this holy Jerusalem, this new Jerusalem is descending from God, it's descending from heaven, and it's just emanating this light, and this light is as clear as crystal. It says in the Word and Life Study Bible, and this is talking about the New Jerusalem, it says, as John draws Revelation to a close, he offers a glimpse of a new Jerusalem descending from heaven. Revelation is the 21st chapter, the second verse. It is Jerusalem as it was intended to be, fulfilling its prophetic calling as a light to the nations, a place of justice and peace, and the capital city and dwelling place of God. Our next part of our lesson starts describing this city. So in verses 12 and 13, it says, also she, and so it's talking about the city, and so it's calling the city she, also she had a great and high wall. And remember everyone, a wall represented safety, okay, and security. So also she had a great and high wall with 12 gates. And remember, I highlighted the 12, it's not highlighted in the scriptures. I want you to see that number throughout our lesson. So also she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. And it's that idea that you can enter the city from any direction, okay? That the, and, and we'll talk about later that the gates are actually open. So even though there's this wall around it for safety, um, remember, this is in everything. This is completion, okay? And so um, the gates are there, um, but the gates are open. But just to go into this, notice it says that the 12 gates, okay, there's 12 angels at the gates and written on them are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So just as a reminder, because this is from past lessons a little bit, there were 12 sons of Israel, okay? Um, there were 12 sons of Israel. And so Israel's original name was Jacob and then it was turned to Israel and he had 12 sons. And his sons were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin. Now, the actual 12 tribes of Israel, and we'll just talk about that, are Reuben, Simeon, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulon, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin. Now, Levi, because that was the priest they did not get, they had refuge cities, but they didn't get a land allotment. So they were the priest. So they're not counted in the 12 tribes, okay? But they were the priests. And then you'll notice that you don't see Joseph's name. He's one of the sons. Well, his sons, his sons are Ephraim and Manasseh. And so Joseph ended up getting, in a sense, a double portion because both of his sons were named as a tribe. So Ephraim was the youngest and then Manasseh. And so you don't see Joseph's name as, so it's not the tribe of Joseph, but because it's the tribe of Ephraim and the tribe of Manasseh, those are Joseph's sons. And so Joseph's inheritance ended up producing two tribes. So those are the 12 tribes of Israel. So again, from our lesson, it says those 12 gates with the 12 angels, the names written on them were the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And so there's the 12 tribes. Then it goes on and it says, now in verse 14, now the wall of the city had 12 foundations and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the lamb. Okay, so the first thing we saw is we saw the gates and the gates had the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now there's actually 12 foundations to the city, okay? And the 12 foundations had the names of the 12 apostles. So let's go and look at the names of the 12 apostles. So we had Peter and Andrew, James and John, who were the sons of Zebedee, Philip, Bartholomew, who sometimes called Nathaniel, Matthew, who we originally knew as Levi, Thomas, and they call him Didymus because he was a twin. And I know we call him Doubting, Doubting Thomas, but he doubted that one time. You know, we don't know what he doubted ever again. So we don't want to stick that on him, but he was the twin. James, the son of Alphaeus. Jude, and Jude is also called Labaius, whose surname was Thaddeus. So it depends on whether you're looking in the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Um, um, but it's the same 12 apostles. Then it was Simon. Um, he's called the Canaanite, but he's also a zealot. So 
Um, that was because of his religious fervor or in his political religious fervor. And then there's Matthias. And you go, Matthias? Well, when we're talking about the 12 apostles, Judas Iscariot, the one that betrayed Jesus, was replaced. Okay. So, so when we're talking about the 12 foundations, his name is Judas Iscariot's name is not on a foundation. Matthias became the 12th apostle. And you can find that in Acts, the first chapter, verses 23 through 26. Okay. And so um, those are the 12 apostles. And again, the wall of the city had 12 foundations and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Okay. So these are the apostles of Jesus Christ, apostles of the Lamb. Then it goes on in verse 15 through 17, and it says, and he talked with me, and he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth, and he measures the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length, breadth, and height are equal. Then he measured its wall, 144. You'd be like, that's not the number 12, but I'll explain in a minute. Cubits according to the measure of a man that is of an angel. So now, you know, I love this because I'm a math teacher. Let's do the math. Okay, let's do the math. First of all, it says that the city is square. So a square means that the length equals the width. Okay, doing some math lessons. Then it says in the lesson that its length, breadth, and height are equal. Well, if your length is equal to your width is equal to your height, that means that you, you, you form the cube. Okay, so the city is this huge cube, okay? And then if you look at the 12,000 furlongs, okay, so that's how it measured, and you do 12,000 furlongs by 12,000 furlongs, that comes out, if we're just approximating it um, by one of my commentaries, it says that New Jerusalem was about 2.25 million square feet. So if we think about a big house, you know, we talk about um, a big house, um, sometimes people have a 3,000 square foot house, or 5,000 square foot house. Just think this city was 2.25 million square feet. And I think I read that it's like four times as big as Alaska, or it's like half the distance. I can't, I think it's a, from going from New York to, um, to um, uh, LA, but don't, don't quote me on that. All right. But just the fact is, it's about 2.25 million square feet. And then, you know, I had made and read 144. And you're like, that is not the number 12. But 144 is 12 squared or 12 times 12. So again, when we look at this, um, he's got this gold reed to measure New Jerusalem. And the bottom of the city is a square. So that means the length equals the width. But then the whole city is a huge cube. Okay. And it's 12. Remember, 12 is a number of completion, perfection. So this is perfect. This is new. Um, there's nothing evil in this. There's nothing wrong in this city. Okay. Um, all that, the plagues are over, the, the wrath has taken place. And now again, there's a new heaven, there's a new earth, there's a new Jerusalem, and this is perfection. And so we have this cube of a city, and then it has this really thick wall, okay, which is 144 cubits. Okay. So there's a really thick wall going around the city. All right. And a cubic is basically, if I remember correctly, it's about a foot and a half. So if you just to get an idea, it's about a foot and a half. Okay, um, so about 18 inches. So just that idea is, um, this is what the city, this is what John saw. This is what he saw, this perfect new Jerusalem. Then it says, the construction of this wall was of jasper and the city was pure gold, like clear glass. Okay, so the gold reminds us of the main material of the temple. When they built the temple in the Old Testament, and you can see that in 1 Kings chapters 5 through 7, okay, the main material of the temple was gold. And so here it says the wall is of jasper and the city was pure gold. And then they, they say like clear glass, you know, and then there's some discussion about gold isn't clear. But hey, if God wants his gold to be clear, it's going to be clear. Okay. This is God. He can do what he wants. Okay. And so the idea of pure gold, normally we think 24 karat gold, 24 karat gold is 99.9% .9 pure. There's still some impurity in it. And pure gold is like that bright, what we call gold, bright, sort of like the writing I put bright yellowish orange. Okay. Um, and that's what we think about with 24 karat gold. But here, Thing saying that the city was basically made of pure gold. So this is 
even hard to imagine the beauty of this city that just think about, even if we just thought about it as 24 karat gold, like the entire city, okay? Um, but then it looked like clear glass, okay? And so there was some transparency to it, okay? And, you know, I always think about with this, you know, and, and it might not even go with this, but I think of um, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. And I, and, and I just think about that um, beatitude. And I think about that beatitude because they said, blessed are the pure in heart, like pure gold, for they shall see God. And for you to see, something has to be transparent. It's just one of the things I think about sometimes, okay, with that beatitude. But then going on, so we, we've got the city being pure gold. We've got the wall made of jasper. And some of these stones, we don't necessarily understand um, that stone because it might not be a stone that we use now. Um, but we but just realize it's a precious stone. So verses 19 through 21, it says, the foundations of the wall of the city, remember the apostles' names are on that. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper. The second, sapphire. We know that's a beautiful blue. The third, chalcedony or chalcedony. The fourth, emerald. And we know that's a beautiful green. Okay, we think about the emerald city. It was revived with the pretty green. You've got to be seen green. The fifth, sardox. The sixth, sardius. The seventh, chrysolite. The eighth, beryl. The ninth, topaz. And we know what topaz looks like. The tenth, chrysophas. The eleventh, jacinth. And the twelfth, amethyst. You know, amethyst is a pretty purple. Okay. And then it says the 12 gates, there goes that number 12 again, were 12 pearls. So just think it wasn't made up of pearls. Each gate was one huge pearl. Okay. You know, real pearl, not, not the fake stuff, a real pearl. And each individual gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city, okay, here we go again, was pure gold, like transparent glass. So again, you know, if you Google this and they'll say it's glass transparent, it's like, glass. they'll say is um, gold transparent. I'll say, no, gold's not transparent. Well, in, in this heavenly New Jerusalem, it's pure gold and it's transparent. Okay, so amen. And God can do what God wants to do. And God knows what pure gold looks like. Again, we might get gold to what we think is 99.9%, .9%, but God can get it to 100%. And when he has his 100% pure gold, it's trans it looks like transparent glass. And that's where we get all those songs about the streets made of gold, okay, just from the scripture, you know. Or there's songs that say, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to view this holy city. I'm going to um, sit at the welcome table, you know. Um, or we'll talk about... Um, Again, like the, the, the streets of gold, okay, from a lot of um, spirituals and other songs. And so we get this from Revelation, the 21st chapter. Now, the foundation stones, and I just read all these stones to you. The foundation stones remind us of the stones on the breastplate of the priests. Now, one of the things I want to show you is notice as we go through the city, we're seeing some things from the apostles. We're seeing some things from the 12 tribes of Israel. We're seeing some things that remind us of the original temple. We're seeing some things um, that remind us of the original clothing of the priest uh, when Aaron was dressed. Aaron and his sons were dressed to be priests. What this is doing is tying everybody together. So now we are one people. It's not Old Testament and New Testament. We are together, the people of God. This new Jerusalem shows the Old Testament with the New Testament, okay? We are all the people, we are now together. We are the people of God, okay? And so um, again, the foundation stones, I read them for you. They look like the breastplate of the priest. This can be found in Exodus the 28th chapter and I just gave us verses two and three and 15 through 21. And this is, and it says, and you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother. So God is talking to Moses and you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother for glory and for beauty. So you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him that he may minister to me as priest. Okay, so then one of the garments that was made was the breastplate. There were other garments made, um, including the ephod, but the breastplate was made. And that starts with verse 15. You shall make the breastplate of judgment, artistically woven according to the workmanship of the ephod. You shall make it of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen. You shall make it. It shall be doubled into, look, a square, okay? A span shall be its length, and a span shall be its width. 
and you shall put settings of stones in it. So here comes the stones, everyone. Remember the foundations? Now look at these. There'll be four rows of stones. The first row shall be sardius, a topaz, and an emerald. Does that sound familiar? This shall be the first row. The second row shall be a turquoise, a sapphire, and a diamond. The third row, a jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an ox, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold settings. And the stone shall have the names, look what's on it. And the stone shall have the names of the sons of Israel, 12 according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, each one with its own name. They shall be according to the 12 tribes. So Aaron's breastplate had these had 12 stones on it. And it also had the names of the sons of Israel. Okay. Okay. Now, the foundations, okay, the foundations were also made of beautiful jewels. Some of the some of the precious stones look different, okay, or they might have more than one name. We don't, I don't know that, but we see again these 12 foundations made of 12 stones, precious stones, okay? And then those foundations going back for a minute, okay? Those 12 foundations, as we um, just move back, as we look through, those had the names of the apostles on it, okay? And had the names of the apostles on the 12 foundations. And then the breastplate had the, because back then the apostles didn't exist, the breastplate of Aaron had the names of the 12 um, tribes, okay? Or the names of the sons of Israel. Now, that's really the end of our lesson, everyone. Just, it's almost one of those things that say, you know, there's a song that says, I can only imagine. And what John is giving us is trying to describe something indescribable. So beautiful, so amazing, so lovely, so perfect, so complete. And so this is the best he could do with the vocabulary he had or from, from an earthly point of view. Um, but it's, um, we can only imagine. And so, um, we, when we should imagine this, this new Jerusalem, cause this is a time of rejoicing. And so then just to finish this chapter, even though it's not in our lesson, it's called the glory of the new Jerusalem. And it says, but I saw no temple in it. So we don't need a church building anymore. Okay. Even though the city's made of gold and that's similar to the temple, there's no temple in it for the Lord God almighty and the lamb are are its temple, okay? So we could have a temple, we have a church to go worship God. God is the temple, okay? This is, the city has no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it for the glory of God illuminated it. Um, the lamb is his light. Remember Jesus Christ, we talked about that. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, okay? Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And so even here, they don't need, uh, there's no longer sun or moon is not necessary because the glory of God, again, so bright, you know, so clear, so like crystal, the light is just illuminating from the city. Um, and Jesus Christ, the lamb is its light. Then it says, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in his light and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. So the only thing that can come into the city is that which is correct. And they bring their glory and honor into it. But honestly, even bringing that into it, um, we sing a song about we fall down, we lay our crowns. Even if we have a crown in the presence of God Almighty, we're going to toss those crowns. The 24 elders, they tossed those crowns. They sung a new song. They sung worthy is the lamb that was slain. Okay, because um, our glory and our honor is nothing in comparison to the glory of God that's lighting this whole city. Then it says, and in verse 27, but there shall by no means enter into it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. And that's, our, that's what we want. We want to be written in the Lamb's book of life. And to be written in that book, we must accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Um, and there's a song um, that says, those pages have been stained, you know, um, and these are talking about the pages of judgment. Um, so it says, so the pages have been st stained by the blood that's sh shed for me. Praise God, I can't read them, neither can he. Because what's forgiven is forgotten. 
and impossible to see, blood-stained pages, stained by blood shed for me. And so when God sees that write-up of the list of what we've done wrong and our sins, the blood of Jesus has blotted that out. Okay, the blood still works, as we said. Okay, thank God we are covered by the blood. Okay, and it's just idea that our sins are covered and not, they're just not covered. They're blotted out even as far as the east is from the west. So God has removed our sins from us, our transgressions from us. And so when we accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, then our transgressions, our sins, they're blotted out. The blood covered that. Jesus was our sacrifice. Um, the lamb who was worthy, um, the lamb, the lion of the tribe of Judah, um, who was worthy to open um, the, the scroll. He is our, he was our sacrifice. He is our savior. He is our Lord. He is our redeemer. And so then when we open this book, the Lamb's book of life, that's, we want our name in that book. Amen. That's the registry we want to be in the registry. So when you go up to new Jerusalem and they look in and they say, they're looking down and go, okay, I see, they see my name. We want our name written in there. And by accepting Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. So it says in God's word in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you do not know Jesus Christ, leave a comment so that we can come and um, Pastor Ken, Pastor Swanigan can come and tell you more about Jesus Christ. Um, and that you will accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, because we want to make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We want you registered. We want you to be able to go into that new Jerusalem, because nothing um, that defiles or, or an abomination or a lie is going to get to go into those gates. Those gates are open, but you've got to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, everybody. Amen. And so then in summary, for this lesson, this is from the Jeremiah Study Bible. It says, sometimes heaven is referred to as a country and we think of its vastness. Sometimes heaven is referred to as a city and we think of its inhabitants. Sometimes heaven is called a kingdom and we think of its orderliness. Sometimes heaven is called paradise and we imagine its beauty. But when we call heaven the father's house, we think of intimacy, and permanency. The most important feature of this new Jerusalem is that God and the Lamb will be there forever. This is our lesson on the new Jerusalem. Be blessed, love in Christ, Sister Sharon.